Hey guys, it's finally here and this is the new MacBook Pro with Apple's latest M3 chips. The unit which we have right here is the M3 Pro version with 18 gigs of unified memory and 1 terabyte of storage and it costs close to 12,000 ringgit. Mahal gila away. Should you upgrade this from the older MacBook Pro with M1 chip? Let's take a closer look. The new MacBook Pro 14 and 16 looks pretty much the same as before but what's new is it now comes in space black. Well, to me, it doesn't look black enough. It looks more like an even darker shade of grey compared to the normal space grey of the other models. However, this space black option is only available if you pick the M3 Pro and the M3 Max configuration. Everything else in terms of design on the MacBook Pro remains unchanged from the M2 series. There's no touch bar, but you get a magic keyboard with Touch ID. And some people claim that it does a better job in repelling fingerprints. I'm not too sure about it. I tried leaving my prints and it isn't all that noticeable. Maybe it's the space black colour which makes it less obvious. The MacBook Pro also gets MagSafe charging connector, a 3.5mm audio jack and an SD card reader. For the M3 Pro and Max models, it comes with 3 Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports instead of just 2 on the standard M3 version. And guess what? Even the MagSafe cable is black. But eh, wait, the brick is white. Come on Apple, wanna have a black brick? Obviously, a newer MacBook Pro comes packed with even more performance. There's the Apple M3, the M3 Pro, and the M3 Max, which packs up to 16 core CPU, 40 core GPU, and you can even spec it up with 128 gigs of unified memory. In a nutshell, the M3 powered MacBooks offer better performance as well as improved efficiency. The MacBook Pro 14 with the base M3 chip boasts up to 22 hours of battery life. That means no more problems if you forget to bring a charger. If you plan to get the M3 Pro and Max model, the 40 inch version only lasts up to 18 hours. So you might want to get the 16 inch version if you want to get the advertised 22 hours of battery life. Apple's MacBook Pro displays are one of the best in the business. Both 14 and 16 inch versions come with a liquid retina XDR displays and they are brighter than before for SDR content. The new M3 MacBook Pro does 600 nits max brightness versus just 500 nits max on the previous model. That's 20% brighter than the previous version. But if you're watching HDR content, it boasts a sustained 1000 nits or 1600 nits for peak brightness. That's brighter than my future. Some of you might ask, should you get the Apple MacBook Pro with the M2 series or the latest version with the M3? It really depends on what you need your laptop for. Honestly, the noticeable performance gains between the M2 and the M3 series isn't as huge compared to the jump between the M1 and the M2. If you need the best performance possible for your hardcore rendering and processing needs, the M3 Pro and M3 Max are the best options to get right now. But honestly, the M2 Pro and the M2 Max still works just fine in this day and age. Since the M2 powered MacBooks have been discontinued, you might be able to save some money with discounts from the remaining stock available from your nearest Apple retailers. For those who are still using the M1 powered or older Intel MacBooks, definitely go and get the latest version with the M3 series. If you're on the M2 series, I would suggest sticking around unless you really need the performance gains from the latest M3 Pro and the M3 Max. If you haven't watched it yet, you can check out Lukman's video in the Soy Chincha YouTube channel where he switched from a Mac Studio with an M1 Ultra to a MacBook Pro with the M2 Max. Whichever MacBook you're getting, please get yourself an Apple Care plan. Repairing a MacBook can be a very costly affair, so that extra protection plan helps a lot for greater peace of mind. You'll thank me later, trust me.